This is a little story called Clockwork Origins. And the main reason that I'm reading this is because of what comes at the end of the story. Uh, let's just say the author had some extra things to say. Hi. Call me Leon. It's not my real name, but it's usable. A uh, few years ago, he capitalized few years for some reason, there was an incident with... with... Why don't we just start from the beginning of the story, shall we? It was just like every normal day fucking school. I don't know why he censored fucking or capitalized it. And there was my brother John. John wasn't doing well in school. Every teacher in the capital S school seems to have given him a G. For real, they had to forget that G wasn't on the letter grade list because of John. When he was... Oh, God. Is he going to use commas like periods for the entire story? Because that'll make this hard to read. When he was in class, he would draw in his book stuff like, capital P, people being cut in half, blood, capital GF, gunfights, stuff like that. And the capital T teachers ended up telling him at the end of the year, Time's up, John. He got angry about this, but on this fateful day... Uh, okay, that's an awkward place to end your sentence. During lunch on this day, his capital G girlfriend, Mari, wanted to see him after school at the old park. He replied saying, All right, fine. After lunch was social studies, or SS. Then was art. After it was ELA. What's ELA? But you can guess what he did during those classes. After school, he went to the park, and there was Mari, waiting on the hilltop near the tree. He walked up the hill, and he was expecting her to say, Do me. Why? Also, how old are these kids? Or something like that, but she said, This is going to be hard for me to say, but I think we should see other people. He responded with, All right, I guess so. Wait, what? She responded with, Your, capital F, failing in school. You draw very dark things. We're like total opposites. Then she walked away, and John's heart was shattered. He walked home, keeping his head down. I said to him, Hey, bro, what's going on? He responded with, Life is pain. I was mystified with what was going on, so I said, You okay? He responded again with, Life is pain. I realized that he would keep responding to me with, Life is pain, so I just stared at him. Then I noticed he was mumbling to himself and was saying, She dumped on my shit. <laughs> Hold on. Did I read that right? She dumped on my chest. <laughs> Is this some sort of breakup ritual I don't know about? Or... Is this how breakups happen in the Bronx? I don't know. Why would she do that? My thoughts exactly. He kept repeating it. In my head, I was saying, Okay, uh, Mari dumped him. What's new? What I mean by that was Mari had a record of breakups all being ended with her dumping him. Him who? But Mari dated John for longer than any other of her boyfriends. John walked upstairs and cried himself to sleep. When he awoke, he didn't leave bed. He laid there for weeks. I finally got Mari to see how he was doing. Me and her were just staring, as in like a flight of stairs, at him, lay there, and she said, He's been laying there for weeks because of our breakup. I replied with, Yeah, he can't get over it. 
Mari replied to me with, Ouch! You might want to take him to a doctor. I didn't take him for weeks. On week eight, finale, he got... I I'm assuming someone got him, like, food and water, or something, at this point. He walked over to his private bathroom, damn, living it up, and he got a needle and some stitching and stitched a smile into the side of his cheek with blood dripping onto his fingers after every stitch. So, there are some people in life who will, like, message you saying, call me right now, it's an emergency, and then you call them, and the emergency is they want you to help them pick what they have for dinner. This is that kind of guy. Everything is the end of the world to him. I walked into his room, and I noticed he wasn't in bed. I heard a noise coming from the bathroom. I opened the door. Also, why is his first reaction to just start stitching his face? That's a common thing with creepypasta characters, is just immediately going to self-mutilation for just about any reason. I heard a noise coming from the bathroom. I opened the door, and he stopped to turn around and look at me. I said, Oh my god! John! John, what's wrong with you? He said, Leave me alone. I ran out of the room and made a phone call. Two minutes later, they arrived and ran up to John's room. Wait, they who? John was still in the bathroom and he said, Back away, I got a knife! They shot him with a tea dart. Uh, okay. Whoever it is, apparently tranquilizer darts are standard issue. Hours later, John awoke, started looking around and said, Where? Where the hell am I? I walked into the room and he said, Leon, what's going on? I replied with, You're going insane over a breakup. Why, John? John said, Not just the breakup. My life. I was shocked. And replied, I mean, most of the problems in his life were his own doing. He was the one who chose not to pay attention in class. What do you mean, John? He replied with, I have had so many damn problems. So many low grades. I keep losing friends. Again, this is your fault. Life is pain. And at the moment, it hit me. His life was full of issues, and he was depressed. He couldn't take it anymore. The doctor came in and asked me to leave the room, so I left. I sat on the bench outside of the room. I heard him screaming and yelling, and the intercom came up and said, All doctors in sections D and E, please report to room 317B. That was my brother's room. All types of doctors ran into the room. Then the voice on the intercom came up and said, Security to room 317B. They ran in. The intercom came up yet again and said, all staff, please go to room 317B immediately. Everyone who worked in the building agreed that this is pro... Okay, first of all, it's like standing room only in this room now, isn't it? If you have all the staff all crammed in there... Everyone who worked in the building agreed that this is probably the worst creepypasta they ever... Re uh, don't do this. Don't ever do this. Especially not if you want your story to be taken seriously, which... Spoiler. This person really wanted the story to be taken seriously. Then it came up again. Leon, please come to room 317B. How do they know that... I walked in, and there was my brother yelling, Let me go right now! I'll kill you all! All the staff left the room, and John said, Why, Leon? Why would you put me in here? Then he jumped out the window. <laughs> Anytime a character abruptly jumps out the window in one of these stories, I imagine that cartoon whoop sound effect. 
Thank God we were on the first floor or he would have died. Then I asked what they were doing to him. One the them said, trying to kill him. He's, capital D, dangerous. So we tried to inject him with cyanide. I said, that, that's usually not how you deal with the mentally disturbed, is just say, fuck it, kill him. I said, are you insane? Then the same doctor said, no, your brother's insane. I got a phone call from Mari. She said, I'm assuming you had a cell phone. She said, John ran into your house. Should I call the police? I said, no. I ran home, and he was in his room with a capital K knife in hand, a bloody shirt, and there was one eye on the floor. Then I said, John? John, are you all right? He turned around, and I saw a pocket watch in his right eye. <laughs> oh, shit. Y you can't just suddenly drop shit like that on me. Like, establish the pocket watch earlier somehow, so that this isn't, like, abrupt to the point of comedy. John said, John is gone. I am clockwork. I was terrified, and then I said, John, look what you've become. Then he said again, who's John? I'm clockwork. I said, no, you're not John or clockwork. You're an insane freak. John, or, or clockwork, said, brother, you wouldn't hurt me, would you? I said, You're not my brother anymore, clockwork! I ran into my room and hid. I grabbed my baseball bat. He ran in and said, Come on out, Leon. Time to play. And I jumped out of the closet and bashed him in the head. As he tried to get up, I hit him in the head again. The, capital PW, pocket watch eye fell out of his head. So he's not clockwork anymore? When I tried to hit him again, he grabbed the baseball bat and threw it. Then he grabbed the pocket watch, which appears to have been disassembled, and then grabbed my leg and threw me out the two-story window. <laughs> again, he started to evilely chuckle. Capital E, capital C. I snapped like him. My skin... What? My skin turned black, my eyes turned all blue, and my hands were all of a sudden holding sharp so swords? Huh? So, he, he got thrown out the two-story window, presumably landed on something, and now he's turning into his creepypasta OC, I guess. I jumped back into the room. So, so play the cartoon sound in reverse, I guess. And said in a morbid voice, I am Leon Clockwork. Oh my God, he actually did turn into his OC. We started a battle of good versus evil. I swung my sword and the knives got knocked out of his hands. He ran for them and jumped down off the balcony and ran out the door, but before he did, he said, Leon, you have always been a goody goody little two shoes. He stormed out. I transformed back into my normal form, but I knew that when we next met, I would change back. Uh, what, huh? So, I need to amend my earlier statement. He turned into his superhero creepypasta OC and took the easy way out by saying, oh, he could just transform back to normal. There have been three reports of clockwork killing three students. Which one? Leon or 
All right. And Mari was one of them. Well, some superhero you are. I have not yet found the location of where he currently is, but I know we will meet again. I am Leon Clockwork. So like Clockwork, this story got deleted from the Creepypasta wiki. And that led to the author posting a reaction to the deletion from the Creepypasta wiki. Because believe it or not, they do have certain standards for quality of writing and certain subjects you can't do because they're so oversaturated. Anyway, here's what he said. Why you hetting on the name Clockwork, huh? I worked real hard on it and you remove it. I don't care if it was a brick wall of text. If you were to read the story, you would have understood how long it took to make it. You don't understand what work we write put into stuff like that. This is why I made my own wiki, so fuck you, Creepypasta Wiki, or Dream Creatures Wiki. Click this link for fair Creepypasta posting instead of this trash heap of a wiki. Creepypastas with no limits wiki. I think posting a pasta should be fair, meaning no limits. Because you admins of this site give admins a bad name. Reasons why. You follow the rules too closely. Huh? Follow the rules too close. So he's complaining that the admins followed the rules. You just look at the pasta and delete it without even reading it. What kind of rule is no reposing? He means reposting. Even I think that was a retarded rule. So he posted this multiple times, and it got deleted. Just avoid being too strict, and you'll be decent admins. Instead of completely unfair admins. I fucking hate admins slash mods slash website owners like you. All you do is just say no, and I don't care. If you didn't remove the original clockwork, I wouldn't have made this story and you wouldn't this problem. So I say to you, your time is up. Laughs maniacally. And this is why there are rules about what you can post to the Creepypasta Wiki. Actually, hold on. I'm going to look up Creepypasta with no limits Wiki. Oh my God, that is actually a thing. Wait a minute, the first thing I see here is a rules section. If you have rules, you you don't have creepypasta with no limits. Oh my god. There are people who posted under the rules section about the difference between quality standards and what the admin calls a lack of freedom. Holy shit. Dude who licks mustard said... These quality standards kind of suck, but I guess that's what I signed up for when I googled Creepypasta with No Limits Wiki. And the admin responded, Really? We have standards now? That's the main reason we were founded. Mostly freedom, and now we've removed the freedom aspect from it. Just great. Oh wow, he said. He founded this because he was angered that his pasta kept, kept being deleted from the wiki. Now he sees all the fucking errors in it. See, this is why you shouldn't be so indignant about things you write very early on when you start writing or when you are very young. Oh, he banned My Little Pony Creepypastas because he was anti-brony and wanted to enforce that. So much for no limits. I mean, My Little Pony Creepypastas are really bad, too. So, I kind of understand that limit. There's no organization to this whatsoever. You just have to hit all pages, and then it brings up a ton of stories. Man, I just found a fucking treasure trove that I could use for uh, crappy pasta readings for the next one. Damn.